Welcome to Deep Dive Defense. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. This video is about Iran's most advanced ballistic missile, known publicly only in its civilian application as the GAW-M-100 Space Launch Vehicle (SLV). While the advanced features of this missile are indeed dual-purpose, suitable for a space launch vehicle, they also directly enable an intercontinental range ballistic missile. This is possible without any real modification on the SLV, and in fact, the technologies it employs are truly cutting edge by any measure. These technologies are combined in this manner by only a very few nations currently developing advanced intercontinental range ballistic missiles. Like and subscribe if you want to support the channel in the algorithm. Now let's start. The GAW-M possesses a very similar technology configuration to, for example, the United States ground-based interceptor and the future Sentinel intercontinental ballistic missile. The primary distinction is that the objective pursued by Iranian designers was the creation of a miniaturized, light intercontinental range ballistic missile. This aims to enhance its survivability in second strike scenarios and to permit widespread deployment that is almost impossible to target reliably. This video is actually the second on this channel concerning this missile, with the first one in the nuclear weapon context linked above. However, this time we will examine the numerous details that render the GAW-M so unique and relevant today. The Qayyum might be the first advanced Iranian missile that does not merely attempt to catch up to cutting-edge technologies developed by the five main nuclear superpowers. Instead, it was created based on a set of next-generation requirements not yet operationally fielded by other global powers to that extent. Consequently, the group behind the Qayyum is the most elite one within Iran's extensive missile industry. This team is the successor to that of late General Hassan Tehrani Mogadam, who is known as the father of the Iranian missile weapon. He and his team of technicians, who were working on the predecessors of the KM-100, based on the giant boosters developed for the identical named GAW-M heavy space launch vehicle, were killed in a tragic accident in 2011. Yet their work did not cease. The remaining team from the original QAM project just adjusted their development roadmap. They chose to pursue a less spectacular looking smaller space launch vehicle in the first project phase. One possessing significantly greater technological sophistication, but also easier to produce. The requirements defining a next-generation intercontinental range ballistic missile are generally consistent throughout the world. Solid propellant missiles are generally preferred in that role, due to their constant on-alert, quick launch capability and their usually faster speed boost phase ascent. Here, the key features include the use of a single high-specific impulse nozzle for each stage and the utilization of a flex-seal nozzle thrust vectoring control system. This method does not waste the chemical energy available in the booster like less efficient thrust vectoring methods, such as jet vanes or separate vernier thrusters, but instead burns it at the highest available efficiency within the single combustion chamber. The other key requirement for next-generation intercontinental ballistic missiles is that of the lowest possible maintenance combined with a prolonged ready-to-fire status. However, there are additional requirements that must also typically be mastered first. These include high efficiency for every stage, usually achieved by utilizing a composite, mainly carbon fiber motor casing, alongside high-energy solid propellant with a higher specific impulse. Missiles like the future U.S. Sentinel ICBM are believed to possess all these features. However, the Qayyum incorporates an additional element of high sophistication, namely its miniaturized size. While this might sound counterintuitive, as a smaller missile possesses less throw weight compared to larger ones, the reality is that it is generally easier to create a large missile within the intercontinental range than a small one like the Qayyum. In fact, after mastering heavy, large ICBM like the R-36 and Peacekeeper, the United States and the Soviet Union, at the end of the Cold War, had the primary goal of fielding a miniaturized ICBM with higher survivability. Once the development of such a miniaturized missile is completed, 
the production of it is in turn easier than heavy ICBMs. For Iran, the added survivability of a miniature ICBM defined the specific goal it would pursue in developing the Qayyam 100. In practical terms, this meant the Qayyam 100 would need to be as small as possible while still fulfilling the requirement of delivering a payload of approximately 300 kilograms to a range of at least 10,000 kilometers. However, another key requirement for such a miniaturized intercontinental ballistic missile is high quantity, since it delivers just one warhead instead of the several carried by heavy ICBM, equipped with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, MIRV. A high number is necessary, which in turn demands a sufficiently low production cost and a high production volume. This high quantity is essential because the small size of the ICBM enables it to be carried by standard sized trucks that are externally indistinguishable from civilian trucks. Consequently, in operational use, a large fleet of such launchers could be deployed to different regions of the country, embodying the principle of not putting all eggs in one basket. Therefore, another key feature of such a miniaturized ICBM is low cost and high deployed numbers. In practice, this means that if Iran possesses hundreds or even a four-digit quantity of Qayyam ICBM launchers, it will possess an assured second strike capability against its main adversary, the United States. This is because even if nuclear warheads are used to target the Qayyam 100 ICBM launcher arsenal, some are assured to survive and retaliate. Thus, the reality is that while the future US ICBM, the Sentinel, costs many tens of millions of dollars, the design of the Qayyam 100 is geared towards low cost and high production numbers. Now, let us take a deep look at the specific details of the Qayyam 100, which make it so advanced. All three stages utilize carbon composite single nozzles with large exhaust diameters. Each of these three nozzles has its flex seal thrust vector control powered by electromechanical actuators, which require no maintenance intensive risky fluids and operate solely on thermal batteries. Each of the three motor casings which hold the three nozzles and their thrust vectoring system is constructed from carbon fiber composites, granting them low empty weight and high stage efficiency. The first missile stage, in order to avoid the use of hot thrusters with liquid propellants, employs small triangular steering fins to actively stabilize the first stage in the roll axis. Once the first stage is burned out and jettisoned, and the shroud of the third stage has also been discarded, the second stage ignites under near vacuum conditions. It is believed that compressed air, cold thrusters in the third stage, are then utilized to provide the second stage with active roll axis stabilization, once again, avoiding potentially dangerous liquid propellants. Once the second stage is also discarded and jettisoned, the small third stage continues to accelerate the single re-entry vehicle until all propellant has burned out. During this phase, the flex seal nozzle thrust vectoring system continuously changes and recalculate the flight trajectory toward the intended target. This compensates for the unpredictable final amounts of thrust the burning out third stage still provides. This is a delicate technology first mastered by the US in their Trident 1 submarine launched ballistic missile. It represents a solution to avoid the rather heavy thrust termination system which the current U.S. land-based Minuteman 3 ICBM missile utilizes. This is an older feature Iran also used on the 2000-era Sejil-1 medium-range ballistic missile. But this new, more sophisticated solution, called the Generalized Energy Management System, or GEMS by the U.S., is the most advanced thrust termination solution known. After that, the hypothetical re-entry vehicle is separated from the third stage, is actively spin-stabilized in its roll axis, and flies without further interactions toward its target. Such a small third stage and re-entry vehicle would not be possible without the GEMS thrust termination system combined with a highly miniaturized and lightweight, high-precision inertial guidance system. This system is necessary to put the unpowered re-entry vehicle on the correct trajectory to hit its target. 
Both of these features were reasons why miniaturized intercontinental ballistic missiles were largely impractical before the 1980s. The Qa'im weighs just less than 19 tons, making it well transportable by an ordinary commercial truck. Its length is only 14.5 meters with a diameter of 1.25 meters, the small fins excluded. This makes it an extraordinarily small and difficult to detect asset for a future IRGC strategic missile capability. The role of a Qa'im 100 ICBM can either be conventional, enabled by its low cost and high quantity, or unconventional, tipped with nuclear warheads and equipping Iran with a first strike and second strike capability. The nuclear application is straightforward and would work sufficiently well with the precision an unguided re-entry vehicle would have at 10,000 kilometers maximum range. Whether the circular error probable, CEP, is 300 meters or 3 kilometers only matters in a nuclear role if Iran intends to perform counterforce strikes against U.S. nuclear weapon infrastructure, which would require higher precision delivered nuclear warheads. But for the main deterrence role of countervalue strikes against industrial or population centers, even a CEP of 3 kilometers would be sufficient. However, if the intention is to use it at least partially as a conventional intercontinental range weapon, it would require some form of steering on its re-entry vehicle to achieve a lower two-digit meter precision. Integrating a steered, maneuverable re-entry vehicle into the limited payload weight of approximately 300 kilograms could drastically reduce the amount of explosives the warhead can carry. Consequently, Iran would have to master a lightweight re-entry vehicle equipped with a suitable 3D carbon-carbon composite nose tip, acting as the main heat shield. Adding to that, also means for steering and correcting trajectory errors during atmospheric re-entry would be required. Iran has demonstrated advanced carbon-carbon composite nose tip designs with suitable cone angles for high-velocity, high-accuracy re-entry vehicles in missiles, such as the FATA-1 or the Rezvan. However, mastering a lightweight intercontinental range maneuverable re-entry vehicle rated for Mach 20 would present a challenge at the very edge of what is technically feasible with today's technologies, especially given the cost constraints such a conventional weapon system would face. As of late 2025, following the 12-day conflict involving Iran, Israel, and the United States, the failure of that coalition to remove the roughly 450 kilograms of highly enriched, weaponizable uranium in Iran's possession, combined with the subsequent ban Iran imposed on any further inspections by the International Atomic Energy Agency, has practically created a condition in which Iran is an ambiguous nuclear power. With its nuclear warhead designs proven by the early 2000s Ahmad program, which even then possessed advanced features, Iran is now only dependent on suitable fissile material to create a notable arsenal of nuclear warheads. That condition is now a reality with the mentioned 450 kilograms of highly enriched uranium. About its whereabouts, nothing is known due to the ban on nuclear inspections. Hence, in the current scenario, and depending on Iran's technological sophistication and nuclear warhead design, anything between 20 to more than 100 fission or more likely thermonuclear warheads could be quickly assembled to create a serious nuclear warhead arsenal. In this context, the Qa'im 100, if deployed in the high numbers for which its design is suitable, could become Iran's primary first strike and second strike nuclear delivery system. In that scenario, a three or four digit quantity of Qa'im 100 launchers would be dispersed throughout Iran's missile cities or other suitably secured areas. A portion, such as one-tenth of the missiles, would be equipped with a real nuclear warhead, while the remainder of the arsenal would be equipped with heavy penetration aids, decoys, that are practically indistinguishable from actual warheads when approaching their targets. In this scenario, the sheer number of potential launchers equipped with nuclear warheads, coupled with the inability to definitively assure that all of the real missiles have been identified and located in real time, would practically result a robust second-strike capability for Iran, 
a capability only the five main nuclear powers possess, enabling a deterrence posture based on mutual assured destruction. The missile closest in configuration to the Ka M100 is the U.S. ground-based interceptor, GBI. While slightly larger, this ballistic missile defense and anti-satellite weapon possesses a very similar configuration, though it lacks some of the very low-maintenance features of the Qayyam-100. Naturally, instead of an application as an ICBM or space launch vehicle, a modified variant of the Qayyam would make an ideal, mobile, anti-satellite weapon, similar to the US GBI. Currently, it is believed that Iran has already finished the development of the next variant of the Qayyam family, the Qayyam 105, with its Nafe upsized second stage. This would notably increase the payload to nearly 500 kilograms while maintaining about the same small size as the Qayyam 100. This slightly heavier variant would certainly be better suited to be equipped with an intercontinental range Mach 20 rated maneuverable re-entry vehicle. This would more credibly open the path to a conventional use of the Qa'im ICBM for psychological deterrent strikes against the continental United States without employing weapons of mass destruction in the form of nuclear warheads. No other country has developed a conventional pinpoint strike ICBM, but also no non-nuclear power has reached the technology level Iran has to develop such a weapon. As already mentioned, the low-cost design and configuration of the Qa'im credibly enables its use as an intercontinental range conventional strike asset. The latest news on the Qa'im development was a test of a presumed upper stage around October 2025, visible from satellite photos. This proves that Iran is very much aware of the immense deterrence the technology it has mastered with the Qa'im base launch vehicle offers for its strategic military posture. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.